When I was in film school, they taught us that proper shot composition involved the rule of thirds and framing the human face with the correct amount of headroom. Visually pleasing images place points of interest on the intersecting lines of the grid. I learned that there is one traditional way to frame the human face by paying attention to nose room, eye lines, and importantly, headroom. The nose room signifies allowing space in the direction the actor faces. The eye lines correspond to the person or object the actor looks at, and the headroom makes sure that the shot is not uncomfortable to watch, so the actor does not have their head chopped off or seem to sink into the bottom of the frame. Most films compose actors like this, where there is only a small amount of space above the character, and even when the camera moves, the amount of headroom remains consistent and balanced. When one head is on the left side of the screen, and the other is on the right side of the screen, the viewer can watch comfortably and empathize with the characters. When there are changes in the image, such as when a character leaves or enters the shot, many cinematographers will reframe their compositions to accommodate the difference. Reframing is as simple and elegant as when Christopher Doyle does it here. Not reframing leaves an unusual amount of headroom, such as when Robbie Ryan does it here. How do filmmakers make the decision to frame people in such an unconventional way? What does it mean for the audience to give the character a little more photographic room at the top? As I learned after leaving film school, cinematic rules are made to be broken, and as long as the aesthetic choice can be justified, it's fair. When filming a portrait of a person, including the environment behind the subject characterizes their inner state or comments on their predicament. An off-center composition creates an imbalance, tension. Traditional film aesthetics say that when you want to show a character who is strong, you shoot them from below. If you want to show a character who is weak, you shoot them from above. When you shoot a strong character and push them down in the frame, you take away some of their power. It can make them perceived to be weaker. The director chooses to see the character in a vulnerable pose. This is the most humbling way to show their mere humanness. This type of composition is uncommon and is usually reserved for cutaways or brief interludes. Some bold films shoot every scene in this way. In Gus Van Sant's Milk, this private conversation takes place in a church and has very unorthodox framing by Harris Svitas. There is a third character in the scene that justifies this aesthetic choice. Empty space in the right setting expresses something almost indefinable. It is what lives above the character, both literally and figuratively. Allowing for room in the air expresses the notion that there is something higher than the characters themselves in the frame. If God is a character in the script or scene, the extra space is justified. This is typical of many spiritual-minded films through the years, dating from The Passion of Joan of Arc, to Marketa Lazarova, to the recent Oscar winner from Poland, Ida. The actor is still the subject of the image, but there is something else there as well, pulling our eyes up. The disembodied head that dreams and prays makes us guess what must be on their mind. If the character is already someone religious, we think it could be the Holy Spirit. In ancient Middle Eastern and Asian art, halos used to appear over religious figures in the form of fire, such as Mohammed in this Persian painting, or as the sun above the Egyptian god Ra. Emperors were considered religious figures, so they are also painted with halos. Since photographic imagery is naturalistic, embodied halos don't appear on screen, but are invoked. That's why I call this type of framing the halo shot. Whether the setting is a church or the characters are believers themselves, these shots are composed not for headroom, but halo room. 16 miles long. The God's eye view is from high above looking down, but the halo view of religious cinema can be said to look high above and straight ahead. This point of view does not mimic the human eye and would require the audience to levitate in order to achieve this specifically unnatural perspective. This disembodied hovering is in itself akin to a spirit that has left the body. 
not every Halo shot has a religious underpinning. Another way to interpret shots that use excessive headroom is that the filmmaker uses it to favor the architecture of the scene, as in environmental portraiture. The exaggeration of the frame finds a prime example in Yorgos Lanthimos' The Favorite. The film consistently uses very wide lenses, low angles, and excess headroom throughout the film. Lanthimos says, One of the things that I was interested in was the architecture of this world, and how people moved from one room to the other, and how these big rooms felt. Architecture manages to create a sense of wonder in Terence Malick's The Tree of Life, which also happens to be one of the most religious films of the past 20 years. When we visit with Sean Penn's character at his job, Emmanuel Lubezki's photography minimizes his physical presence in the awe-inspiring building by framing above the actor's head. The space has the grandeur of a cathedral, yet represents the secular achievements of capitalism over any religious impulse. Malik shows with this sequence that Penn is lost in his profession, and feels empty inside, cavernous and hollow, like the office, and beset with anxiety and loneliness. To put it bluntly, the compositions show a man in over his head. Cinema can give a visual form to abstract ideas, as Stanley Kubrick once said. If it can be written or thought, it can be filmed. A breathtaking image is still a dream, or just an illusion not unlike a vision from beyond. The experience of going to the cinema has often been compared to going to church, where light is a key component, where a shared experience among strangers gathered in a quiet space feel moved or uplifted. Cinema reflects human stories of all kinds and leaves different readings and interpretations open to the viewer. For to experience empathy, we needn't agree with the character or filmmaker. We simply must recognize our own truth in what we see. Whether the halo shot captures the thematic significance of architecture, or important information that helps to define a character, a little off the top goes a long way.